Hello, this is vertebral column arthrokinematics. This video is applicable to lower cervical spine, thoracic spine, as well as upper lumbar spine. So let's take a look at movement in between joints in all four cardinal planes. For the purposes of this video, I've selected two vertebral segments, T10 moving on top of T11. I'm going to zoom in right here. And um, I marked four joints. You can see the inferior joints of T10. They're sitting on top of the superior uh, two joints of T11. So the first movement that we will examine is flexion. And as you know, flexion is an anterior tilt of the superior vertebrae on top of the inferior vertebral body. Okay, so let's take a look how this actually occurs through what motion in between the joints. So here we can see a clear distraction in between the right facet joint of T10 and the right facet joint of T11, as well as distraction in between the left facet joint of T10 and the left facet joint of T11. Both facet joints of T10 glide anterior superior. So if you take a look from neutral, it's closed. You can barely see the pink tape on it. And now I'm going to move it into flexion and you can see an anterior superior glide of the inferior facet joints of T10 on top of the superior facet joints of T11. As you can see in the sagittal view, the anterior disc is being compressed. There is less space in between the vertebrae here and clearly much more space in between the posterior vertebral bodies. So posterior disc is being stretched out. So the nucleus will migrate from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration. So it will migrate posterior. Okay, let's take a look at the opposite movement, which is extension. So we'll go from a flex position to extended position. As you can see, this movement is um, shown as a posterior, um, posterior roll of the superior body of the vertebrae on top of the inferior body of the vertebrae. So T10 body is rolling posterior on top of T11. Okay, let's take a look what happens in between the actual facet joints. So facet joints, you can see how they're approximated, right? So here in the flex position, they were far away, and now they're closer together, and you can barely see uh, the pink tape, right? The superior facet joints of T11. So what's actually happening is that T10, both facet joints of T10, move posterior inferior on the facet joints of T11. So we can see that both inferior facet joints of T10 move in a posterior inferior direction on top of the superior facet joints of T11. The nucleus is being moved from posterior to anterior, as you can see, because the posterior side of the disc is being compressed, while the anterior side of the disc is being stretched out. Okay, let's move into side bending, I will demonstrate side bending to the right. Side bending to the right looks like this, and you can clearly see the opening of the left facet joint right away, while the right facet joint is being closed, and you can see less of a surface of the uh, right superior uh, facet joint of T11. So what's happening with side bending to the right, um, left facet joint, left inferior facet of T10 is performing an anterior superior glide on top of the superior facet joint of T11, while the right facet joint, inferior facet joint of T10 is moving into inferior posterior direction, as you can see, on top of T11. So posterior inferior, okay, while this one the left one is moving anterior superior. Let's take a look at this side now. So we know that the right side of the disc is being compressed. You can clearly see it here, while the left side of the disc is being distracted. So we know that the nucleus will move from the area of high concentration to the area of low concentration. So, sorry, it will migrate to the left, okay? So it will migrate to the left. Okay, 
And fi finally, let's take a look at rotation. So we'll perform rotation to the right. So rotation to the right looks like this. You can see rotation is named after where the body of the vertebrae is moving. So the body is moving to the right. You can see the arrow coming through, right? It's moving to the right. Um, but as you can see, the spinous process is actually moving to the left. Okay. So the body is moving to the right. So the person is rotating to the right while the spinous process is moving to the left. So as you can see, there's clearly a gap in between the right superior facet joint of T11 and right inferior facet joint of T10. So this joint is being distracted while the joint on the left is being compressed. Okay, so there is definitely that gap and you can see it in the sagittal view, right? While this facet joint is on top of one another, these bones, okay. So, the left inferior facet joint of T10 is moving into anterior superior direction, as you can see here, while the right facet joint of inferior facet joint of T10 is moving into inferior posterior direction on top of the superior facet joint of T11. The tension in the disc will be clockwise, as you can see. It will go in this direction clockwise. Okay, and that was it.